Welcome back to Vault Hunters. Today, I'll be upgrading my pickaxe into a Paxel and upgrading my armor. As I start to progress through the mod pack, it's time for me now to get some better equipment and tools. So I'll be upgrading from chromatic iron to chromatic steel. It is much more expensive because for every chromatic steel ingot that I need, it's four chromatic iron. And there's some additional materials and things, so it's definitely a big upgrade. I think I'm just going to go with a pickaxe, and I need some more vault bronze and a couple butotic mass. To make those, we're going to do a perfect butodite surrounded by vault essence. This is why it's important not to overspend on your materials, because you never know when you're going to need some stuff. Make a couple of those, and craft. So with 150 capacity, that should be plenty of space for me to add some jewels onto it. Everything I need from the gilded affinity, wooden, ornate, living in coin, and then axing and shoveling. And with all of those on there, that'll leave me with an extra 36 capacity. I think I'm going to leave that capacity open so that I can add copiously if I find one. And there we go. I'll toss into the enchanter, get efficiency 5, fortune 3, and I'm breaking through. And that gives me my first mega tool, or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> These things are great. Now I can get rid of the shovel and the axe in my inventory and just carry a sword, a bow, and my Paxel. Now that I have my tools upgraded, let's go ahead and do some more upgrades on the armor. The gear I have on right now is good, but it's not the best, and the mobs are getting a whole lot stronger inside the vaults. There are two ways that I can upgrade my armor. The first of which is just comparing the new items I have to the items that I'm currently wearing. And the other way is going to be crafting new armor through the Vault Forge. The more often I craft items using the Vault Forge, the more proficiency I'll get and the better at crafting I'll be able to be, which will give me better and better gear. So I'm just going to go through and compare all these different items to the ones I'm currently wearing, see what is the best. Okay, I was able to find pretty good replacements for the leggings, the boots, and the shield. But the helmet is a toss-up between these two. But I don't have any better options for the chest plate right now, so I'm going to try to re-roll the modifiers on these and see if I can get anything better. What I'm hoping I can have happen here is we can remove maybe the 10% healing efficiency and then roll for something better. But the nullifying focus takes something random off of it, so we'll just have to see what happens. Nice, exactly what I wanted. Okay, now an amplifying focus is going to add a random modifier, so we'll see how that goes. 12% mana regeneration. It is not any better. <laughs> That's kind of how it goes. It's a little bit of a gamble when you're reforging modifiers on your gear. And I definitely have plenty of materials to keep going. I could keep retrying and all that, but I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot on the helmets first. And since the two new helmets I have are pretty similar, except for the suffixes, I'm going to go ahead and just use a wild focus to modify all of the prefixes and suffixes. Yeah, that's, that's not too great, to be honest. <laughs> the plus two health is good, but I have better item rarity on the other helmet. And I'll have plus five health between my shield and my leggings. Let's go ahead and just re-roll it again. Plus two armor, plus five percent trap disarm. That's, I think, exactly what it was before. <laughs> All right, one more. Okay, okay, okay. Not really getting much out of that. I think we're just going to go with this one. And enchant all the new stuff. And this sets me up with a whole brand new armor set. I pretty much just want to go for the strongest sword possible. And I think that's the best one with the plus five attack damage. And it doesn't look too bad either. Oh baby, look at that. We got a pog in the black market. It's pretty expensive, but it's definitely one of those things that's... Well worth the shards. I can take just over half the shards I have, but that is totally okay. Go ahead and buy that. Hell yeah. And I think that actually means that I can now make the full belt. All right, I'll go ahead and start putting all these materials together. Got two pouches. Turn into a double pouch along with the first double pouch I already had. And a whole bunch of other stuff. It always... I. Using a pog is like one of those things. I almost want to just sit there and look at it. Just keep it and never use it up. But got to be done. It's got to be done. All right. Now I got a full loop belt. Okay. The last thing to upgrade today is going to be just a few skill points and expertise points to spend. I'm going to do one more level of unbreakable to keep my gear in good shape. I'm going to do one more strength. 
and I want another level of healing. And lastly, I'm going to do hunter, but I'm going to specialize in living. Now that I'm at level 20, there's going to be a few changes. I no longer have a beginner's grace, and I can also find treasure inside of the vaults now. On top of that, I can also now get artifacts in my completion crates. And the next step is to build an artifact tome, which will display all the artifacts that I've already collected. It is a really expensive recipe, though, with two black chromatic steel and five chromatic steel ingots. It's mostly expensive because of the black opal that's needed to make the black chromatic steel ingots. But I've pretty much saved every black opal I've got so far, so I definitely have plenty to use. I just spent like 700 shards on one from the black market. That was perfect, but I kind of forgot to get the clip. <laughs> Anyways, that definitely saves me a few black opal, so I only have to use four. That'll give me everything I need to make the artifact tome. And there we go. Oh, look at that, and it's actually going to give us an artifact right away. <laughs> okay, so we need to put a wall behind it, but that's pretty cool. There we go. Kind of see it. <laughs> Works well enough for me. Now right, let's check out which artifact we got. And... That one. Nice. Oh, I think it's the portal. It's like a picture of portal. <laughs> all right, first artifact down. Only 24 more to go. And then once we collect all 24 artifacts, then we can open up the final vault. And I don't really know what that entails, but yeah, after that, we beat the game. So we can either find artifacts inside of completion crates. I'm not sure if it's just the paradox or if it's all completion crates. Or we can craft them out of artifact fragments, which we can find inside of treasure chest loot. So this is where the mod pack really starts to begin. We really start to set into the main mission of Vault Hunters and start filling out the puzzle. There is another pog on the table. I need it. I need it. I need it. Let me... I only have about an hour. I have an hour and 25 minutes until the black market changes. And I'm like 200 shards, almost 300 shards short. Okay, okay, I think, yeah, I'm going in. I'm going in the, into the vault. I'm going to go kill as many mobs as possible. That's going to be my focus. And then I'm going to try to get that pog. <laughs> That was a great run. 159 mobs killed. And I got myself plenty of soul shards to use. Go ahead and buy myself another pog. <laughs> that's great. Oh, that's so good. And I think that makes for another successful session in the books. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.